Hey James. Hi folks. We're back uh, from our glorious travels abroad. So let's reminisce while we uh, make an English treat and uh, have a little bit of an other English treat here. James, what's going on with your hair? Uh, my hair, it's completely unmanageable. There's nothing I can do. I want some of you. Ready? Cheers! Okay, now... Actual sign. So, we weren't actually going to make another foodie video right away, but, um... We got these delicious looking beets in our CSA box, so we decided that we would go ahead and make them. And for us, the cool thing about beets is that we use the beet tops um, in our cat food. I know some people actually just eat them, but I um, So we're just going to use them in our cat food. So with beets, what you want to do is just make sure they're kind of clean, not a big deal. Cut off the tip with the, with the green stuffs on it, and then cut just a little bit of the root off so that it's a little bit showing, and then put it um, the open end down in some water in a casserole dish for this recipe, and then add some balsamic vinegar, just like this. Um, probably, you can kind of pour it on there, just a splash here and there, adds flavor, gets soaked up into the beet as it's cooking, it's great, you can use your best judgment on that. And all we really want to do then is cover it and put it in the oven. We're going to do this at 325 for about an hour. Maybe we'll crank it up to 400 when we put the rest of our meal in. Um, and then we peel it when it's done. It's delicious. Oh, it's so sad. Yes. We had such a good time in England. And yet, not once did we have shepherd's pie. Of well, all the fantastic vegetarian things out there, we absolutely did not have vegetarian shepherd's pie. The only shepherd's pie I saw on any of the menus actually had... Shepherd's in it. Well... It's a sad fact about England that many people know. Cannibals. Yes, yes, we did see the cannibal head at uh, Cheddar Caves. So, um, for shepherd's pie, what you want to do is cut up a couple of onions. Try not to get the onion juice in an open wound on your hand, or you'll be crying like I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's disgusting. It hurts. And if you're uh, clever, what you'll do is have your mashed potatoes made from the night before, and then you can use those on top. Uh, what did you put in the mashed potatoes, James? Well, uh, potatoes being the number one ingredient. Aside from that, there's some delightful Point Reyes blue. Uh, blue some cheese? Blue cheese. Not very much, right? A uh, little bit. Mm, I choked them down. Yeah, you managed to enjoy them, so there must not have been that much. Yeah, I don't like blue cheese. Uh, there's some butter, some salt, pepper, mm -hmm. there's some uh, aged cheddar, and uh, a little bit of milk. That's about it. Hmm. Well, we um, also are putting carrots in our shepherd's pie, although the cool thing about the shepherd's pie is that you can put whatever you want in it. Um, yeah, we're actually not putting any shepherds in it this time. No. Babies. And um, savory Satan. Oh, Satan. <laughs> yep, we are putting that in there. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're putting some carrots um, in there, and we're just chopping them up willy-nilly, however you want, um, however many you want. It's very flexible, um, but this is the point at which you want to chop your carrots up and your onions. And this is the point at which you want to have... Some beer. Mmm. Fuller's a fine brown ale. Just keep chopping. James, could you do the garlic? Absolutely. I'm going to stick a couple of garlics in there too. Your hair looks like something out of Monty Python from the 70s. It's 
Very scary. Say that to my face. I am. <laughs> Mine's yeah, well. kind of crazy too. I thought there wasn't supposed to be humidity in Silicon Valley. Well. I think I also heard the one about no mosquitoes. Yeah, right. So, um, we're putting two tablespoons of olive oil on uh, about half the onions in here. Uh, it happens to be all of the good olive oil we have, so hopefully that'll work. And we've got, um, a package of Satan. Savory Satan. Mm -hmm. Hey! Kitties! Kitties! Cut that out! Come on! Alright. Oh. <laughs> Alright, you saw it here first, folks. Thomas had a big mouthful of grim fur. Super. So back to the action, or the other action. Um, yeah. So Satan, we're talking about Satan. So Satan, okay, well basically with Satan, um, I'm a firm believer personally, but basically with Satan, um, we're just gonna kind of cut this up into the pieces that we want. I want them a little bit smaller and James will just have to deal since he's holding the camera. But um, <laughs> yeah, I just... Well, since this is going in a stew-like mixture, it uh, Smaller is probably okay. Yeah, I think it's cool. So we're just going to do it this way. So we're cutting our Satan up into kind of just um, more willy-nilly chunks. <laughs> Whatever size you want, folks. Just cut them up. Um, this is not an exact science by any means. And what we're doing is cooking the Satan with some onion, olive oil, and then we're going to chuck in some Worcestershire sauce and also some, what do you think, some amino acids? Brags. Oh yeah, that'll uh, Round out that spice thing. it up, mm -hmm. bring out the natural uh, savory goodness. Yeah. Belle, what do you think of that? Like savory or sweet? Savory or sweet? Sometimes Belle likes something sweet and then something salty. I don't know why. So, that's what we're going to do. Um, we're just going to... Some more sauce, and we're just gonna be gratuitous with it. Um, just kind of, just want to make sure that this stuff gets some yummy flavor. I don't know how much was that? Five tablespoons? I have no idea. Um, quite a bit. It comes out pretty slow. I imagine it's less than you we think. Probably don't even need amino acids in there because that's pretty salty. And then we just um, cook it on medium heat and stir it up. Okay. Meanwhile. Meanwhile, our carrots and onions have a little bit of garlic sliced in there, uh, put through the press, and we're going to cook those on a low heat, covered. A little bit of olive oil. Do you want zucchini in there, James? I don't know. Do you want zucchini in there? I don't know. I want pepper on this. Do you want any pepper on that? Mm, not right now. Let's put the pepper on later. Well, I'm putting the pepper on this now. Well, yeah, that's a fine idea to put pepper on that now. There's no reason to pepper the uh, carrots. Do you want some pepper for yourself? Mm-hmm. All the time. It's spicy. Mmm, that smells good. I love the smell of onions. And savory Satan. You know, if we grooved on mutton, Eating at uh, pubs in England would have been a whole lot easier. Although, there's actually quite a bit of vegetarian options. Oh yeah, there was, but there were so many sheep everywhere we went that I'm sure that like that must be the staple of the diet there. It was amazing. So mm -hmm. many sheep. Unless they're just big fans of sheep milk. Hmm. Could be. We actually um, went to a urine shop and... Oh, that <laughs> The guy was crazy. I forgot about him. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We went to this yarn shop in Wells, which there's a big famous cathedral there. I think it's uh, the St. Andrews. It's uh, based Andrews. from the 14th century, I believe. It's really old. There are like um, Saxon kings buried there. It's really mm -hmm. an old place. Um, and we went to this yarn shop in this little side alley, and this guy um, approached me even though we were shopping for yarn for James, right? For me, of course. Um, and he was the owner, and he was like a cross between that guy from Mad TV who plays Stuart. It's really creepy 
and Michael Caine. It was like love child offspring, absolutely. And yeah, it was, definitely. The uh, creepy thing was he had the worst breath in the world, and he was standing two feet away from me, talking and talking about America. And the and fact Americans. that he was two feet taller than you. He was huge. He towered. Shows over you me exactly how was, close like, he was. Yes, Ooh, it, was. it was creeping me out. Of course, I was wearing the shirt, so. Well, then it's understandable. I mean, obviously. No, I don't know, but um, it was really creeped me out. Anyway, he said, an interesting fact, that they only had one bit of yarn made from local animals at all, and it was alpaca. So I thought that the sheep were for wool, but they're just for meat and eat. Okay, so for all you carnivores out there, just pretend that this is a skillet full of sheep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mama. Don't eat me, Lisa. Hey, watch it now. You're gonna get Fox on her ass. Wait, the magazine? <laughs> Rupert Murdoch's networks. Alright, how are carrots going? <gasps> Look at them all. So, carroty. Fantastic. Okay, so I think we should probably start with the broccoli. Yeah. So, have you decided you want zucchini in it yet? Yeah? Alright, let's... I'll get those chopping. Alright, so, um, we're just roughly chopping the broccoli and the zucchini. Um, saving the stalks for cats, of course. And, uh... You know, England, there were a lot of really amazing recipes that we had in England. Um, in, oh, the Compass Inn was so good. Uh, the Compass good. Is in, in Chicks Grove. If you're ever in the, uh, what would that be, the Midlands? Yeah, I guess so. If you're ever in the Midlands, looking for a place to stay in the middle of nowhere that has first class food and uh, high quality, good selection of local beers on tap, hand pulled. Uh, stay at the Compasses Inn in Chicks Grove. Um, Alan will take care of you. That's for darn certain. For darn certain? For darn certain, that's right. <laughs> hey, where's your Scottish accent? You didn't pull it out the whole time uh, we were in England. Well, You've got the hair! <laughs> yeah. There's nothing I can do about my hair. It's uh, a wee bit crazy. But that's it. That was hilarious. Mm -hmm. Okay, so how's the food coming? Uh, what, Looking pretty good. That? Oh, oh, essential charmer, man. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh. <laughs> Sorry. Alrighty then. I'm gonna be falling apart with the next few years here. Yeah, Mark my well, words. I mean, your fortune. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh dear. Well, that wasn't good. No. No, so we went to, uh, we also went to Wookie Hole, which, it may surprise you, we didn't actually see any Wookiees. Um, <laughs> I know, I was waiting for Chewbacca, but no. No, no, although they did film a number of Doctor Who episodes there, so. And, uh, we, James is we were about three dream weeks, dream. we were about three weeks early for the Who 05 convention. <laughs> Colin Baker was going to be there, but I've already met him, so... That is a shame. Yeah. Mm. Uh, yeah, so we went to Wookie Hole. Some fantastic uh, natural caves and a really, really awesome Victorian, uh, what would be a penny arcade. Um, and, uh... I'm sorry. I'm sorry that. Chatting, <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Uh-huh. Yeah, it was really cool. Penny Arcade. That would be awesome. This is the size of the pennies in the Penny Arcade. I don't know if, uh, you know, any of you folks are familiar with what British pennies looked like before, like, 19... I think they got changed in, like, in the 70s, so, um... Now, my fingers are small, so you get a sense of, uh, scale here. Pretty so cool. Divine justice. Pretty big. So, we went to the Penny Arcade, and while we were there, I had... Oh, cool. Do a comparison side by side. Here's a standard Lincoln scent. Here is one of the pennies from the Penny Arcade. It's roughly the size of a half dollar, if any of you are familiar with the Kennedy half dollars. People were very strong back then. Uh, apparently so, yes. And the pound is not much better in terms of weight. Um, yeah. In fact, my brother Dan, you know, pointed out that. Well, actually, James pointed it out. I pointed it out, but we're going to give Dan credit anyway. It was funny. James <laughs> dropped it. Did you drop it? Yes. He dropped a pound on the um, floor of the ice cream shop that we were at. Baskin Robbins in London, of course. We all went to Baskin Robbins. And yeah, it hit the ground, and my, my brother looked down, and Dan um, looked at James, and James said, um... That's why there's so many cracks in the floor. Okay, that wasn't funny. That's why they call them a pound. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah, we were at the Victorian Arcade, and um, I had my fortune told by um, one of those little fortune tellers, and it predicted death by shepherd's pie. By shepherd's pie. Pretty uncanny, huh? Yeah. Considering now we're making shepherd's pie. Yeah. So, watch out. If I'm dead tomorrow, I guess we'll know. That's right. Mmm, <laughs> looking good. Zucchini, carrots, broccoli, onions, garlic. And in the other pot, we've got still setting the Satan. And savory Satan. <laughs> savory Satan and onions. Um, with some Worcestershire sauce on that and some olive oil in each. Did it? James, how old are you? Uh, I am 33. I had a birthday uh, that was actually, it was right after our trip to England, and so we decided to go and spend it in Paris. So my mother in law actually brought this shirt 3,000 miles. She brought it from Chicago to London and then from London to Paris nice, for my birthday. The nice thing about it is that it really, um, it brings out your chest hair. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm looking quite chic, I'm sure. <laughs> Very nice. So we, we had, a lovely, uh, had a lovely birthday in Paris. We went to Père Lachaise Cemetery. Uh, oh, that was fun. Lots of famous folks are buried there. Uh, Oscar Wilde. Singer named Jim Morrison, he's buried there too. Marcel Proust, uh, Max Ernst, um, Edith Piaf, and 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 me. I'll, I'll be buried. Oh yeah, we too. we we got Rena a little early birthday present. We got her a plot there too. Um, yeah, so <laughs> I had a glorious birthday. We went on a River Sen cruise, uh, dinner cruise. That was very nice. And then, when I got home, look at this fantastic thing that was waiting for me. It's a triops. It's not just a triops. It's a colony of triops. It's an army, a veritable army of triops. That is so creepy. That James. you can grow your own. Look, look at how big they get. Actual size. Okay, now. Actual size. Let me just say, that this is the most evil gift in the world from Don and Drew, who knew that I thought that these things looked like that thing that crawls out of the guy's ear in that one Star Trek movie. That's what it is. And that is disgusting that you're going to grow that in our house. 
The cats are going to eat them. I mean, what? That is so gross, things. I need a gallon of spring water. Uh, we're at the point where we're going to commingle everything. Uh, so let's add a little bit of amino acids. And we're going to put in some beans. We're using a bean mix. Um, and we'll just put the whole can in. It's got uh, garbanzos, kidneys, and pintos. Uh, feel free to use whatever kinds of beans you would like. Or not to use beans at all. Hey, maybe some people don't like beans. If you're using, if you're putting the sheep in, maybe you don't need beans. And we're going to use, oh, I would say four ounces of tomato paste. Looks about right. Let's get that going on. Mix in our Fomaton. Uh, Satan. Satan. Savory Satan. And, and it's looking mighty fine. And we're just going to add about a cup of water to give it a, a nice stock consistency with all the rest of the stuff that we've put in. It should cook down to a nice savory gravery. And how long do you cook that for? Oh, we'll probably want to let this simmer for maybe 10 minutes. And then... The lid on or...? We should probably let it simmer uncovered. We want the uh, gravy to kind of cook down to a, a nice stew-like or, in this case, pie-like consistency. Alright, so, I have, uh, looks like everything together for the Triops adventure here. We're going to stick the sticky thermometer on the outside of the tank so we can monitor the habitat. Because we want to keep our Triops eggs at a constant temperature so that it, uh, between 73 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit, or for our European friends, uh, that would be 22 to 29 degrees centigrade. So, we've got our pure water in there. We add our... Oh, yes. Uh, we add our sand slash plant conditioner. Seems like whoever packaged this, maybe English wasn't their first language. I don't know. Is that them? No. Ooh. This is just, we're, we're just making their house. We're just making their house at this point. Now, what I want to do, this is them. These are the triops. See that? It says open it over the tank. So. So that you don't have some kind of triops infestation in your house. That's right. That's horrifying. Yeah, so here we go. I'm opening it over the tank. Get ready for it. That's it. So we're finally ready to cook our shepherd's pie, which is good because it is 12.30 in the morning and it cooks for a half hour on uh, 400 degrees. So what we did was we just divided up our veggies into either one. We didn't put any additional spices than what we mentioned earlier in here. Um, you can put thyme, rosemary, whatever you want, marjoram, I don't know. I've never had marjoram. I have no idea what it tastes like. So 
You can put whatever you want in here. Just cover it with the pre-made mashed potatoes and smear it around. See, now the potatoes are light and fluffy like sheep. Mm. Hmm. Maybe that's why it's called shepherd's pie. And it's ready to go into the oven with ya. Into the oven with ya. <laughs> So our beets have cooked up quite nicely, and now it's just a matter of very delicately, you don't have to be too delicate, I like to save as much beet as possible, I mean you can be pretty barbaric with it and just kind of chop the skin off, but it does just peel nicely off, and uh, there we go, oops, beet juice everywhere. Mm, it never comes out. Mm. Garnish on top, some of Laura, Laura Chanel's Chevre. You can use any kind of goat cheese you would like. They um, make perfume too. Uh, I think that's Chanel. I think this might be Chanel, but a little dollop on top. Is it supposed to come Magnifique. out like toothpaste? Um, I'm being lazy about it, yeah, because it's so late and we just want to eat. But that's no excuse not to have your food look good. Mm. Mm. You can really taste the sheepy goodness.